Bonk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the last last cast of the summer. The egg My rod goo years. version of uh, nice of clean Alaska. rod here. Got egg goo all over it. This is one of my steelhead side drifting rods, which also happens to be the perfect rod for fishing a Dick Knight spoon. Tom. Very similar techniques. Very similar light gear. So much fun to play a big cove. But one of the advantages, and and in this case, disadvantages to that Dick Knight rig is it's going to catch everything in the creek. Yeah, that's the problem right now. Is, is these cricks are just polluted with humpies right now, which is a good thing. But if you're trying to catch a coho, which a lot of folks are going to be trying to do next weekend uh, for the coho derby in Everett, you might not want to go with this Dick Knight program. However, moving forward, as we get some rain and as the pink salmon runs start to diminish, this is going to be a go-to for anyone wanting to catch a coho in the rivers here, at least in the North Puget Sound. So how do you rig this up? You want a 10 and a half foot rod. This is a real light action rod. Uh, this is one of my Lama Glass XMG50 rods. But any soft rod, real long, sensitive rod like this is going to work well. I've got a slider rig set up here. Uh, I've got, of course, uh, this is 12 pound high vis main line. I've got a slider rig. This is just a swivel uh, slid over the main line. I've got a bead in here. I've got another swivel tied in that's going to stop that. And then I've got a dropper uh, anywhere from 6 to 8 pound test with a big loop tied on the end uh, so that you can switch your leads out. You want a variety of leads, anywhere from a quarter ounce up to about an ounce. Maybe an ounce and a half, that'd be pretty heavy for some of the deeper stuff. But, but sometimes that, of leads. After, after a big rain, you're, you're going to have to yeah. step up. I mean, but and a couple important points. you got a little tiny bead here, protects the knot, that's important. Yeah. And you've got just a loop on the business end of the lead, and that's what's going to allow you to change out your lead very, yeah, very quickly. Yeah, bring an assortment of leads. i got a little, a little box with some leads in them. I brought it in here, and just an assortment of lead sizes, because you may be fishing a real a real froggy area where right. this light lead works fine, but then you may fish an area where you see some cohos rolling and a lot of current, a lot of depth. You need to get down to those cohos. You're going to need to bump that lead up. So reason we fish a dropper rather than fishing a pencil lead or a stick lead or, or anything, Robbo, is, is the fact that you've got a sinking piece of gear on the end of here. You need to keep this thing off the bottom. If you feel that lead tick bottom, your dick knight is a little too close to the bottom. Yeah, the nice thing with this is this keeps your dick knight up off the bottom. Right. So you want this thing just, just fluttering along the bottom there where those cohos are holding. And you can run pencil lead and do the same thing, but then you've got to really keep that thing up off the bottom. Otherwise, that thing's going to be right in the rocks. This keeps you up a little bit. You don't want this three feet long. You know, uh, six to ten inches is fine. Some guys will run up to a foot. That's about the right amount of length. I agree. Six to eight inches for me is, is what I want. Now you're going to go to a pretty long leader. This is about a five foot leader down to. No, oh, the half and half, half, and half thick knife. Yeah. Now look at the size of this. Look how small that is. That's. You there wouldn't you go. believe how small that is. That's about a little over an inch long. Yep. Just a tiny little lure. That's they a, will absolutely crush that's this. That's a number one. That's a number this is one. A number one. There's, the there's Wee Dick Knight is even smaller than that. It's about three quarters of an inch long. The Wee Dick Knight and the number one are going to be your two main sizes you're going to want to go with. This is a half and half, 50 50. This would be probably my go to for cohos. Amen. The froggy frog frog is, is nasty. money on the snow. It, it's got green on one side and it's white on the other. It's yeah. a dynamite. Sometimes later in the day, you got to go to that frog. But when you're fishing these gears, that is a number eight hook. You need to have replacement hooks, just like just as if you would with with a saltwater spoon, like a like a coyote spoon or, or a silver horn kingfisher. I keep an assortment of extra replacement hooks. You need to do the same thing with your dick knife. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing you want to do is maybe look at some uh, some silvers with maybe a little chartreuse. They got a little, little bit of chartreuse yeah. on the tail. The red works pretty good. The Michael Jackson, black with flex. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. good one too. In clear water, that yeah. one works well. But how are you going to fish these? You're going to find where those coals are rolling. You're going to throw in there. If there's some current, you're just going to simply let it drift through, okay? Just like you're drift fishing. When you get to the end of the drift, you're not going to reel it in, okay? When you get to the end of the drift, you're going to reel in really slowly, okay? Because chances are that thing's going to swing into some softer water. Those coals a lot of times will follow it, but they won't hit it. Reel that thing in real slow, all the way back to the rod tip, okay? There's a lot of times they'll, they'll schwack this thing as your swivel's getting right to the rod tip, and, uh, and uh, you think, oh, it's over, bam, you it's got a coal on right at the side of the boat. Or if you're bank fishing too, uh, and this is a great technique for bank fishing, because you can cast a long ways with this 
with this light dial with spinning reel, uh, you can get into a lot of water with this with this thing that you might not be able to with plugs or spinners or anything like that. So killer way to fish coho, very light tackle, very effective, and that thing's gonna catch pinks, it's gonna catch coho, it's gonna catch chinook in the river, and, and I tell you what, you're gonna get blistered on it. But it's also a little snaggier than, than, than you would anticipate. So make sure you got a nice variety of dick nights. And in fact, when, when I was guiding the rivers around here, I used to tie up a leader roll of dick nights uh, with six foot leaders just so I could get gear back in the water. Killer way to do business. Here's, uh, here's the tackle yeah, here's assortment. A, here's a lead box here. Bunch of different lead, swivels, beads, everything you need. And another box full of dick nights yes. and more swivels and beads. I mean, I got every dick knight you can imagine. There you here. Go. But look, I've got a whole pile of half and halves. I got a whole compartment full of froggy patterns. There you go. So you can tell what uh, what, what I spent a lot of time on. And here's some uh, some silvers with chartreuse. Uh, I tell you what, this is a go-to for catching coos in the North Puget Sound. It even works on some of the coastal rivers. Well, uh, Joe Superfisky, one of the coastal guides, when it gets really low and clear out there, he'll go to this technique as well for catching some of those low, uh, those, those fish in the lower rivers out there on, on the coast when they're not biting. And that can be really frustrating because you'll see these coho in the hole and they're jumping and, and, and they're all around you and you can't get them to bite. So three keys to consistent coho action. Fish early, fish deep, and fish small. And that Dick Knight rig is a way to do all three of those. Yeah, right there. so there you go. There's a great go-to technique uh, for the upcoming coho run here in the rivers here in Western Washington. That's your last cast tip of the week. We'll catch you next weekend here on the Outdoor Line at 710 ESPN Seattle. I gotta go find my dog. <laughs>